Hello, hello. I'm back today with another enclosure build. This is something I've wanted to do for a while now and I've had some ideas around how I'm gonna do it and it just took me some time to get the pieces together. But now I'm excited to finally try and bring this thing to life. Um, just a quick prefix to get it in there as well. In the last video, you know, that I'd done where I was talking about ghost mantis communals and how I ended up thinking, yeah, this probably ain't great. And the final thing I left it on was that I was gonna rehouse the two final adults together. Well, one of them got eaten, so that's another big negative cross against the ghost communal experiment. Anyway, let's get on to some enclosure building. The main thing I wanted to do is incorporate it around this, which is a petrified bonsai tree. I don't know if this is fake. I think it's just kind of, I mean, it looks kind of real, but I don't know. It might be a real bonsai that's been petrified. I'm not really sure. This was in an aquarium. And I did do a video a while ago where I made a bonsai tree inside an aquarium, but I've since kind of ditched that tank and now I've got this spare. So what I want to do is make kind of a zen type garden with a bonsai tree in the middle of it. Um, I've got some resources now together that should help bring that to life. First things first, I've got this custom made enclosure, which is just a standard thing. I've made these loads of times, loads of times before. Just a glass enclosure with a metal mesh, um, which should hopefully have plenty of room here. Don't even know what's going to go in here yet. Probably a mantis, a big one of the bigger mantids. Um, but yeah, this should give me plenty of space to work with. So I just need to give that a bit of a clean. Then I have this, which is, I think it's sphagnum moss. Now, this might be a bit controversial, but I'm going to go with it. So... Uh, since up to now, I've always been a bit of an advocate of, oh, if you get something from the wild, you need to sterilize it, you know, bake it, freeze it, microwave it, whatever, to kill off anything nasty. But I know that from reading on forums and different opinions, it's kind of a 50-50 split. Some people are of the opinion that, no, get rid of everything. You don't want anything nasty in your tank because you might get mites or parasites or something, and it just, you know, it's a danger to the creature. And then on the flip side of it, you have people who say, no, don't clean it or, you know, don't sterilize it. You don't want a sterilized environment in there. You want all the healthy bacteria and little microbes and stuff in the fauna. And that will help the tank uh, not hinder it. So I was kind of always on the fence a little bit as to well, which way do you go then? Um, but, you know, from a lot of reliable sources and from people who have been doing it for, you know, decades, I've seen... Have said that it shouldn't, it really shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to go with it. So yeah, this came from the wild. I got it on a little walk I went on the other day, and it's really nice and green. I hope the moss sort of kind of survives because I, I want to try and keep it green and looking like a uh, grass, if you like. And then I can have that as a bit of a bed on the bottom of the enclosure, and hopefully lead up to kind of a little hill. And, oh, this is breaking to bits. That's the only thing, this is really brittle because it's been underwater for so long. So I want to have a little hill leading up to the bonsai tree, which will kind of then overlook the bottom bit. And to make up the foliage in the bonsai, I've got this, which is reindeer moss, um, which I just bought off eBay. Fairly cheap. It's often used for things like model railways to build like trees and bushes and stuff. So I'm hoping that will look good. When I've done this before, I've used these, which are Marimo moss balls, which works fine underwater. But I know from another enclosure where I've used these Marimo moss balls in, they do tend to lose their colour and they go a bit yellow, um, which isn't ideal. So I don't know, well, I might see how it goes. I might try this and if it looks crap, then I might swap it out for the Marimo moss balls. But if not, I'll use my balls to make some extra kind of groundwork and maybe some little bushes on the ground or whatever. Don't know what it's gonna look like. Maybe we'll add some more, but yeah, let's get on with it and see how things go. Also, you've probably noticed I've had a bit of a change around. So I've moved all my creatures to kind of one wall now, which just makes it a bit easier. And I've got a table here, so it's a bit easier for me to film stuff and have better access to everything. The only thing I need to sort out is I'm not really happy with the lighting in this one. I used LEDs but they're just not particularly bright enough. Um, so I'm just gonna have to work on that and put a proper lighting in this area. But other than that, I'm happy with it because they were a bit all over the place before, but now I've kind of got everything in one spot, which is much easier. 
So first things first, I'm gonna have to do the boring bit, which is clean this tank up a bit, because it's got watermarks and fingerprints on it, which isn't very nice. It's all right, but it definitely could need a bit of a wipe down. So I've got my solution of white vinegar and water, and I'm gonna get a cotton bud and just rub that down. And with it being white vinegar and water, it'll be non-toxic. It's been diluted as well, so it won't be too acidic. And it's just a good way to keep the glass nice and clean when you do need to do any spot cleaning as well. All right, so we've now got a nice clean enclosure. The next thing I'm gonna do is get some clay balls and put it on the bottom and then mesh over the top, which will be our drainage layer. So any water that may come down there will collect in the bottom and that will stop any mold growth or things getting too sort of soggy and damp and manky at the bottom. So they're not gonna use a lot, just enough to allow for the water to collect if needed at the bottom there. Now I'll put the window screen mesh in, which will then stop the dirt just kind of falling through and filling in the vacant space that we want the water to go into. So I also actually got this big bag of sphagnum moss and the purpose of this, rather than, because I kind of, the other bit, I managed to pull up as an actual bit of a mat, whereas this has just randomly been pulled out. Um, but it's really good for, well, it's good for decor, but also I'll put a little layer of this over the top of the mesh because it will, again, just aid in stopping any dirt falling through the gaps. All right. And next, I've got all this good stuff, which is the natural mulch that I got from outside. And I might just mix that in with some of the store-bought peat and cocoa fiber, just so there's a lot of, a big mix of different types of dirt. And I wanna build this area up a little bit so the bonsai can kind of sit in the corner, overlooking the rest of it. Don't need a whole lot of dirt in here because it's not going to be housed a housing for anything that burrows. It's more just a base point for the moss to hopefully propagate on. Yeah, so there we go. That should work. Now we just need to add our moss to the grass. I'm thinking as well, before I get too gung-ho with sticking this in, I'm probably going to try and remove some of the dead leaves and stuff that are sort of stuck to it, just because we want it to be like a nice lush grass. A few wood lice running around in here I can see, but they won't do any harm. That's most of it gone. I just wanted the bigger leaves to not be in here because that will detract away from the bonsai kind of aesthetic. Yeah, you can see it's just like a mat. I think the best way to do this is probably to break it up into clumps actually, and then we can kind of place it in Oh, some wood lice on the loose. Never seem to have a lot of luck with moss in my enclosures. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, whether it's too much water, not enough. Um, the type of moss, maybe. It just doesn't seem to survive too long. But I'm hoping with this being on its natural earth that it grew on originally, maybe it will do better. We'll see. It's so fluffy and soft. You could definitely make a comfortable bed out of this stuff. All right, so there's our nice grassy base. The next thing I'm gonna do is the bonsai itself. And we wanna make a nice, it smells lovely. I'm smelling a lot of things today, it's weird, isn't it? Make a nice kind of foliage on the top here. I just hope it looks real. I'd say that definitely passes as a tree, right? Let's get it in. So the plan is we have this nestled on top here. I and mean, I'm kind of hoping this moss will keep growing and then it will all just grip around everything anyway. It's not too bad, it's just whether I want it to be... Yeah, it definitely needs to be more upright, doesn't it? Right, let's try this. Can kind of slot that underneath all the moss and the dirt, and actually, it might make a cool little decor piece because then it might poke out the bottom. 
Yeah, I quite like that. There, that's cool. Yeah, just a bit more upright support for the tree. I just really hope this moss stays green. Alrighty, so the only other thing is these moss balls and what to do with these. I've got this stuff now and I'm not really sure what to do with it. I don't want to detract too much away from the moss and stuff. I might just have it at the sides or something. So I've also got this uh, mossy branch and I'm thinking actually that might be quite cool in there. It sort of needs something at the front here, doesn't it? So I would say this is pretty much done. And I'm actually really proud of how that looks. I think that's my favorite enclosure. Just remains to be questioned then, who are we gonna put in here? So I'm thinking this guy, Theopropus elegans. The reason being, he's fully mature, he's got his wings, so he doesn't need to hang and molt anymore. And he does spend a lot of time just kind of chilling on the horizontal. He doesn't really hang very much from in this enclosure. And he's got the option, he's got the netting at the top. So yeah, I think we should pop him in there. It's a bit big for him, but he'll be fine. And my other mature mantids are either females who'll probably end up laying an ooth in there, um, or bigger mantids that probably need a bit more side space to hang from and yeah this wouldn't really be appropriate for them but I think for this little chap it'll be ideal. But I'm really happy with how that's turned out. It's definitely going to be one of my kind of centerpiece enclosures and hopefully the moss will hold up over time as well because it would be great to have this as a proper bioactive enclosure and keeping that really nice vivid green colour. And there we have it, my bonsai enclosure. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you got some tips maybe from it. Let me know if you've got any comments or anything you feel like I could do better or any suggestions, anything like that. If you like this kind of content, I usually post videos at least once a week, so consider subscribing. I've also got an Instagram and a Twitch which you can find down in the description. But until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.